This is Tom, and it's the 20th of August, August, and around 10 after 12 a.m. This is me reading this. Born to the Y, train sons, Camilla, and two hours later, this is how I talk now. Notice how my mouth seems to be moving a whole lot less. There's no straining. There's no uh, spasmings. Big change from the, I can't talk, man. So there's something in the ingredients in Ambien that allow me to speak and relax. And, uh, you know, I can actually talk like a normal person, which is great. Ambien is a drug with many faces, and not all of them are sleeping. Best known for treating insomnia, causing bouts of uncontrollable nocturnal binge eating, and endowing Tiger Woods with enhanced sexual abilities, Ambien has another property, one that may very well change medical history by normalizing neurological functioning in damaged brains. In 1996, 24-year-old Louis Vion was struck by a truck, resulting in an injury that left him in a persistent vegetative state. Then, in 1999, Louis's mother decided to feed her unconscious son a crushed Ambien tablet through a straw to reduce involuntary muscle spasms in his arms. To her amazement, Louis spontaneously regained consciousness, opening his eyes and speaking for the first time in three years. And so I decided to visit Louis in South Africa and learn more about the Ambien effect. I met with Dr. Wally Nell, who has known Louis since he was a child and saw Louis through his Zolpidem metamorphosis. He's in there. Louis! Wie sie so? Hello, man. You can't do it. Huh? How are you, no, Ali? This is going good. How can it be with you? Do you know that you were the first person in the whole world that took this Solnox? Yes, well, it's still working. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, yes. Oh, yes, it's uh. still working. That was the picture of how he looked before his accident. Louis was 25 years old, and he was working at the Far East Rand Hospital as switchboard operator. And he borrowed a bicycle from one of the friends there, and that night at about half past 11, he's, somebody was outside my gate and they were calling me there was an accident, a bicycle accident. So they took me through to the ICU and he was lying there, but his head was twice as big as it used to be because he was brain damaged. It was terrible, you know, for, uh, for a mom to see your son like that, that's bad. Three years in a solid coma. He never said one <coughs> single word, no. He swallowed the tablet and we were standing there, myself and my husband, and I think it was after 20 minutes um, I just heard him, he didn't say anything, he just heard, he did this. Mm. I looked at my husband and I said, I, I swear I heard something. And he said, no man, it's nothing. And after about 40 minutes, um, his eyes were like, you know, like stars. It was like twinkling. And I says, Louis, can you hear me? And then all of a sudden he says, yes, hello mommy. And I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't. I just cried and I phoned Dr. Wally and I phoned my family. I said, Louis can't talk. She told me the story. I said, it's totally impossible. This, it doesn't happen, these things. In my time, when the brain is dead, it's dead. 
So I came out on the Sunday. We gave him the tablet and I went to stand there and the family was standing there on the bed. And uh, I saw also the twinkle in the eye. Then you started with all your nonsense, now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there is rehabilitation. Louis had his three tablets a day. He's on half twice a day now. His IQ, 10 o'clock before he gets his tablet. He's 70, and after the tablet, two hours after the half a tablet, his IQ goes up to 90. What other sorts of brain injuries could be treated with Ambien? What we have treated and what we are treating is multiple sclerosis, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, cerebral palsies, near drownings. We've got the problem, we've got the answer, but we haven't got the in-between. We didn't know, we didn't know where to start or how to start until Ralph, he's the big fundy on this, on the, on, the, on the explanation part, on the more scientific part of it. In 1999, Ralph Klaus stumbled upon an article about the miraculous awakening of Louis Vion and decided he wanted to study the effect further by imaging changes in cerebral perfusion before and after Ambien. What happened in Louis' brain was that there were these big areas that were not functioning at all, kind of dark areas. And then after Zolpidem, these regions all normalized. So they're like a day and night difference. This, this is Louis' uh, brain, his original state before Zolpidem. And you can see this large um, decreased uptake in the parietal region, which uh, normalizes after Zolpidem. You can see where the arrow is there. Here it's about 40% of normal. Norm comes to um, 200% after Zolpidem. So you have these two phenomena, you have the excitotoxic effect, which at the same time is stabilizing the microenvironment. So you have almost these suicide cells that offer themselves for the greater good. And you have the other cells, which are influenced by the GABA, which downregulate and survive. The exact biochemical mechanism of Ambien's therapeutic effect in brain injury has yet to be identified, but Dr. Klaus theorizes the GABA-A ion channel undergoes an epigenetic change after brain trauma, causing an unregulated influx of chloride ions that suppress neuronal activity. So you have really two different GABA-A receptors here. You've got the normal GABA-A receptors, which you know, induces the sort of sleepy change. Then you have the abnormal receptors, which has gone through all these, these phases after brain injury, is not the same as this original receptor anymore. It is a receptor which is super sensitive. And Zolpidem, through distorting this receptor, normalizes it again. And when that happens, then the brain becomes less suppressed, obviously. And you see these um, changes on the brain spec scan or metabolic changes, and you see the changes clinically. So Zolpidem works anywhere in this, in, this, uh, in this spectrum, basically. Because everywhere in the spectrum you have, you have this, this part that is damaged, or dead if you like, or, or non-reversible injury if you like, and you've got this parallel area of dormancy. This is Jonathan Poole. He's a bank manager here in Guildford actually. And um, he had a stroke, uh, and after his stroke he had uh, problems understanding people who, who suffers from auditory agnosia. So <clears throat> he hears sounds and he hears words, but he doesn't know what they mean. Dr. Klaus and I went to meet Jonathan Poole, the banker who lost his numbers. A sudden stroke at the age of 56 left Poole with a lesion in his left temporal lobe that interfered with his ability to read and understand language. Dr. Klaus prescribed Poole Zolpidem, and I wanted to see the effects firsthand. I see I can hear what you're saying very well. But if Klaus talks to me, I would not hear half of what's saying because this, this, this ear is uh, doing something funny inside the brain. <laughs> so, so when I talk to you like that, I talk quite well. But I hear from this word, my words will come very short of the ceiling. Interesting. <laughs> and if you see Dr. Klaus's lips while he speaks, are you then able to interpret the words? Most of it. But if it's a new word, uh, like names, numbers, people, I, I don't hear. Unless it's written down in front of me, then I might have a chance to say it. 
See, it took me nearly six months to hear my wife's name, which is Sue or Susan. But if I someone on the phone and just give a name of Sue, it's done it like, and means no name to me at all. It's been very much more easy since he's been on the Zolpidem. I wouldn't let anyone take him off it. I really wouldn't, because it makes life so much easier for us all. But before his stroke, Jonathan was very articulate, was very good with figures and things like that. Since his stroke, although he can obviously now speak properly, he does still have problems with words. Um, very bad with numbers, particularly over the telephone. So quite often if he gives me a message over the phone, I know I have to check it first because it's quite possible he's got the words wrong or the numbers wrong. Could we test the effect, Dr. Klaus, would you? I'll, I'll, I'll write down a few uh. numbers. Just sort of more or less complex numbers. So I'll give you five numbers. Right. And then you, um, you say them once, once I say them. Yes. And then I'll, uh, we'll give you an example and an hour later we do the same numbers. Yes, that's Maybe fine. Maybe we'll see something. Possible. Okay, you ready? Yes. 583. 153. 637. 377. Something 7. 291. 251. 830. 3 and... I've lost it. I heard, I think I heard there were three, but I've lost, I didn't hear it quickly enough, so that was, I've lost that one. Okay. <laughs> um, 991. 171. Okay, we asked you five questions <laughs> and five were wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, let's get you off. Have a, have a right. seat. Then. Right. Then, I'll, then we'll see. Even though Jonathan Poole had already taken one 10 milligram Ambien that morning, the effects had diminished by the time we arrived, so he asked him to take a second, allowed 60 minutes for the drug to reach optimal concentrations, and tested him again to see if his understanding of numbers had improved. 641. 641. 198 478 Yep. Seeing the positive effects of Ambien on Poole and Louis was extremely impressive, but there was still the matter of Thomas Rowe, a voiceover artist who is one of the most dramatic responders to the Ambien effect. That was fun. In 2009, Roe played a tragic visit to the dentist, one that left him without a wisdom tooth and without the ability to speak. Roe's career was ruined and he was forced into retirement at the age of 52. One night he stayed awake on Ambien to find his voice had returned. This is how I talk now. And so I traveled to Orlando, Florida to meet Tom at his former studio, Sunspots. I spent, you know, years here. Um, I was the voice of, of uh, Circuit City when they were in business for six years. I did a lot of uh, Nissan. Um, it all ends tomorrow. That kind of stuff. When I hear myself or feel myself speak, I, it, it's hard to believe. You know? It was like a country song. I lost my career and then my dog died, and you know, what, what can I do? Other than if, if there was a job for someone with a speech disorder. It's not so much I, I want to go back behind the mic again, but uh, I'd like to speak without pain, because uh, it really hurt. For someone that hasn't experienced anything like this, could you describe what it feels like muscularly? Um, if you took your bottom lip, and pulled it hard, as hard as, as, maybe as hard as you could, out. And then took your neck and 
grab it and pull back and the forehead and pulled up and your cheeks and pull back. I take the Ambien and I feel everything turn off. The only drug that works is Ambien. In order to test Ambien's therapeutic effect, I asked Tom to promote a Chevy spring event. The gene that has Chevy spring event, and we're taking $8,000 off our next Tahoe. Bizarre. I can hear me, and the inside me, breathing that. I know the rhythm, I know the, the sound, drives me. Unlike many brain trauma patients who don't experience Ambien's typical hypnotic effect, Tomro started to become inebriated. In a world of giant monkeys, only one man will stand above the apes. Tonight on WGN. And you'll need to arm them with the skills, the knowledge, and the confidence they need to be victorious. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's just yeah, pretty, it's it's funny. You can't deny the ambient. It's, yeah. It's, uh... yeah, it's working. <laughs> yes. It's not there yet. It's working. While General Grant was busy with his forces, there was something going on deeper in the South. The sun had set, and although Tom had to fight a strong urge to sleep, his voice was back and couldn't be stopped. It's Mardi Gras at Universal Studios. Oh, and you're gonna love it, Cher. We're gonna have a big time. That, that's no different from what was done when I was there. And now, with the Ambien in full effect, I once more asked Tom to promote a Chevy spring event. It's the Gene Messer Chevy spring event, and we're taking $8,000 off your next Tahoe. That's right, get a brand new 2010 Chevy Tahoe at G Messer Chevrolet and we'll take $8,000 off MSRP. It's time for a new Chevy Tahoe from Gene Messer Chevrolet. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it, it feels like being alive when I do that. Don't do that close zoom. <laughs> <laughs> what started out as a serendipitous discovery may now represent one of the most important interventions for brain trauma. With time and medical research, who knows what the future may hold. We, we, we try to push along this research on Zolpidem. All the research that you do is actually just uh, out of interest and goodwill of, um, of people who are trying to find out what's going on. It's just scientific curiosity, really. These insomnia drugs are not optimized for, for patients with brain damage, and therefore there is a lot of money to be made by if people develop this and op optimize it specifically for, um, for people with brain damage. I tell myself, get it on. It's, it's such a wonderful thing. How can we leave it? I don't think it's fair to any uh, anybody or any population or any race or anything to say leave it with what we've gone through now.